Want to put together the most OP fire build in Assassin's Creed and Hollow? Well, today I'm going to tell you guys what you're going to need and how to put it together. That's it, this is Laserborn, and welcome to today's video, guys. Today I want to share with you guys the most OP fire build currently right now in Assassin's Creed and Hollow. We're also going to be talking about different ways that you're able to put this build together, whether you already passed the game or whether you're still, you know, trying to get through the game. You're still going to be able to get a lot of benefits from this build, even though you might not have the pieces I'm going to mention. Today, I am extremely excited because we got the release of a brand new pack, and I was just waiting for this pack to put this build together. Now, you do not need this pack to actually get the most out of this build, but with this pack, it actually gives you the best benefit of the actual build itself. So... Theoretically, you don't have to get it, but you can just wait for Oppo to actually come and pick it up with some Oppo from your vendor whenever the set is available in case you don't want to buy it. But we are going to be taking a look at the Hell Damnation armor set. And we're going to be talking about how you can, put, with this particular item, so this particular armor, you're going to be able to put the best fire build in Assassin's Creed with Hollow. But before we get started, I do want to remind you guys to don't forget to drop a like and drop a comment if you enjoy this type of content. Also, Timmy, I am looking at you. Make sure you hit that sub. Turn on those notifications so you guys won't miss when videos go live. Also, make sure you guys head on over to our Discord server. We have a ton of Assassin's Creed fans over there. If you want to join the community, make sure you guys head on over there. So, let's talk about what we're going to be able to do with this particular build. So, as you guys have been seeing in the gameplay right there that I've been showing you, this thing automatically works, Rex. And the way it's going to work is we're going to be taking the Helm Damnation armor set and using it to these max ability. Like I said prior to my video, though... You do not need this armor set to actually get the best out of this build. I'm going to mention another armor set and also show you the location of where you can pick it up in case you don't have this one. So this one you guys are able to pick up with Helix credits. Theoretically, you just need two armor pieces. You don't need all of them. But of course, if you have all the armor set completed, it's going to give you the most, uh, the best of, you know, best of both worlds. So with two armor sets, you have increased armor when weapon is ignited. That's extremely important. It's going to make you super tanky. So to ignite your weapon, it's super easy. All you got to do is throw the, the cloud of fire and boom, your weapon is ignited. Now, there is a ton of synergy with this particular armor set because after you have all five of them, it restores some health on hits when weapon is ignited. So as you guys see the synergies here, you get armor when your weapon is ignited and you get health back when you're, you know, when your weapon is ignited. So pretty easy, right? So Pretty simple in the sense of how to do it. So let's take a look at what weapons I recommend for this particular build. The ones that I think work the best and the ones I would recommend. So if you always want to keep your weapon ignited, guys, you're going to want to pick up the uh, this weapon right here, which is called the Speculiar Axe. Now, the Speculiar Axe is actually pretty interesting because this one ignites your weapon after critical hits. So every time you get a crit hit, you're going to be igniting your weapon. Extremely important. So theoretically... Speaking, if you're getting a crit hit every single time, your armor is going to get increased and you're going to be restoring your health, making you super duper tan tanky. Now, if you feel the axe is too much of a letdown or too slow, I'm also going to get mention other weapons that you're going to be able to use. So, another weapon I want to recommend that weapon, but specifically, um, shield is uh, this one right here, and that is the sarcophagus shield. Now, this one in particular is pretty awesome because every time you parry. It has a chance to create a small fire around you. So every time you parry, you'll be able to ignite people and light them on fire. Once again, this build is focusing primarily on fire. That's why we're taking a look at the, the ones I recommend to be very beneficial for you guys when using this with fire. Now, this particular armor set does come with a shield of its own, which also has, includes fire. But I think the other one's a little bit better uh, because every time you parry, it gives you a chance. This one in particular has a chance. It says create a small fire around you. After blocking five times. So theoretically, you're going to have to have your shield out every single time. Block, block, block. And it's going to create a small fire after every five blocks. This is pretty much guaranteed that after every five blocks, you'll get the fire. So what the sarcophagus is, is a chance after parry that you'll be able to create one. So it's pretty much pick your poison. But me personally, I don't see me running around with shields right now. The game is pretty easy, even on hard difficulty. Uh, you know, I don't see me struggling when it comes to using the shield too often. So... If you do want a rocket shield, those are the options I'm going to give you guys to uh, pick a shield that you guys are going to be able to, uh, you know, kind of benefit that whole fire build uh, for you guys. All right, so we are going to be mentioning a sword that's actually pretty, pretty OP, which is the sword. sword. This pretty much increases attack when the weapon is ignited. I believe this is the one that comes with the pack. It's actually pretty effective, even though 
you will be a little bit slower if you run the shield and you run the sword at the same time. It's still a very viable weapon weapon if you're not running the shield and you're just using the sword. It's just going to increase the attack speed when your weapon is ignited. And pr theoretically speaking, your weapon will be ignited the majority of the time. But I feel like if you're going to be using this one, you might as well use the axe that's going to ignite every critical hit chance. And it's going to give you the same speed as the sword would. So that's another viable option. Now, me personally, guys, I actually like to run spears or I like to run the daggers. I feel like that's like the best combo uh, to run with this build. It just makes you a little bit faster. All right, so the dagger I want to recommend with this one is actually pretty good. It's not going to be igniting your weapon on fire. But remember, we are running the axe with a critical hit chance. So every crit hand chance, our weapon's going to be ignited. Plus, we're also going to be using the ability of igniting our weapons. This is actually pretty good because this is going to restore a low amount of health for each crit hit chance. So this is going to give you that max DPS, max damage, because we're getting you know our stuff from igniting our weapon. But we're also getting our, our, you know, our weapon and our health back by critical hit chances. This is actually pretty good. Now, you're definitely going to want to pair with this one with something that outputs more damage. You could actually pair this with a spear or pair this with a sword. Those are the best combos I could pick for you guys. As far as spears, you're probably going to want to look with something that increases the speed after every hit or increases critical damage after every hit. But theoretically, those are the weapons you're going to want to be putting together for this particular build. Now, as far as the bones are concerned, guys, I want to recommend this right here, which is the Viper Bow. Now, the Viper Bow is actually pretty good because what it's going to do, it's going to increase critical chance after every hit up to 10 times. Really important. You're going to be critting a lot. And you remember, when you're critting, you're going to be able to get your, you're going to be able to ignite your weapon. When you're critting, you're going to be able to get your armor. When you're critting, you're going to be able to do more damage. So it's a lot of synergy going on here. Another one, another bow that I want to recommend, and I think it's a paid one. I think I have the location of the Viper Bow. If I do, I'll go ahead and show it in the video. Uh, but for the uh, Shadow Strike Bow, I think this is a... I don't remember. I'm going to have to see where this one, where I got this one from. But this one's actually pretty good because, remember, since we are using weapons that are going to restore our health every single time, our health bar is going to be very high exponentially. We're pretty much going to have full health every single time. And this is increases critical damage when close to full health. Really important because we are going to be putting quite a lot with this, this build. And I think those two bows are all the ones that I would recommend for this particular build. Now let's take a look at the ruins that you want to recommend here. There are a couple of really good ruins that are going to be very beneficial. So let's take a look at the ones we want to mention. So first I want to have this one which says chance to ignite your weapon on parry. Really important because remember this lets us use. Not only does it let us use the shield that if you block five times you ignite, you ignite someone. But this one gives us the ability that if we actually even parry with that, it's going to give us the chance to actually ignite someone. So keeping that synergy with the whole fire aspect of the thing. The other one I want to recommend is the Chain Fury Rune. This is actually pretty good because that's going to increase attack after each hit up to five, 10 times. Really, really good and uh, really effective. Another rune that synergizes pretty well with the shield of the five blocks is the Curate of a Block Rune. This is going to do its restore some health after blocking five times. So not only are you going to be igniting people when you're blocking those five times, but you're also going to be getting a portion of your health really back in soon. Another rune I want to recommend is the Curative Perfection Rune. This is going to restore a low amount of health for each critical hit. Remember, we're going to be critting a lot, so that's going to be giving us health back as well. The other rune I want to recommend is the Spark Guard Rune. This is actually pretty good and pretty dope in the sense because this one, when you parry, it ignites your weapon. So if your weapon is not ignited, if you parry, it's going to ignite it for you, giving you the benefit of the armor set and giving you the benefit of you know, being able to restore your health. Now, as far as minor ruins, I want to recommend the minor combustion rune. I believe this one you're able to get it even higher than the one I have right here. This is just going to give you extra fire damage. The one that gives you a little bit more light damage, which is the minor rune of agility, is going to be really important. And there's other runes that you're able to put here that are going to give you more light damage and critical hit chance. Those are the ones I would recommend as far as minor runes are concerned. Now, I did mention before the video that I was going to let you guys know exactly which armor set to use in case you don't have this one. The one I want to recommend is this one, guys, is the Mentor's Cloak or the Mentor Armor Set. It's going to be really important. I'll show you guys the location of where to pick this one up. It pretty much increases the attack after every critical hit. And if you have all five pieces, additional increases the speed. It's going to make you super mobile, super fast, and, and agile. And it's going to fit fair perfectly with the whole uh, fire build in case you do not have this armor set in parts particular. 
So those are the ones I want to recommend. And now let's take a look at what I believe uh, should be the abilities you should be looking for or the skills you should be applying here. There's only one that I want to kind of emphasize that you guys should definitely, definitely pick up. And that is this one right here, which is the Fire Strike. Applies fire to your right hand melee weapon. Enemies that catch on fire will suffer additional damage over time. That's going to be your number one priority. You're going to definitely want to be proccing this as much as you can, especially if you're not running the sword that ignites on critical hits. This is what you're going to be using to ignite your weapon every single time. So that's the one I want to recommend. Apart from those guys, there's other ones. The Harpoon is pretty awesome. I love me the Throwing Axe Fury. Those are pretty dope. Uh, but the main one is that one. Now, as far as skills are concerned, the skills get a little bit tricky because for the skills, you're going to want to have make sure you invest dependent on what weapon you want. So if you're going to be using spears, invest on spears. If you're going to be using daggers, invest on daggers. Uh, th that's going to be like the gist of it. And of course, anything that gives you melee damage, those are going to be the main priorities. But the ones I highly want to recommend, of course, is grit. Grit is extremely important. I believe grit is all the way in the bottom right here. Uh, grit, yeah. So re grit is actually pretty good because it, regra it regains the red portion of your health bar when landing successfully melee hits on the enemies. Extremely important and extremely viable since you're going to be doing that a lot. The other one I want to recommend, guys, is the heavy dual wielding. This is extremely important, especially if you're going to be running heavy duels. Really good. You could do basically, you guys know what this does. It duels heavy weapons. The other one that I want to recommend is the Battlefield Cremation. This is actually pretty good. Enemies who perish from one of your fire attacks will continue burning, dealing fire damage to not only them, but also nearby enemies. So after you kill them, they're going to stay burnt in the ground. And the enemy that walks around there will also get ignited. Really, really important, especially for this fire build. It makes it pretty OP. And of course, if you're starting out the game, the paths that I would suggest you take before anything is definitely go Way of the Raven and then go Way of the Bear. The Way of the Bear is going to give you a little bit more melee damage, melee resistance, and health. And the Way of the Raven is going to give you assassination damage, evasion, and health. Really good skill tree, especially for this particular build. Those are the ones I recommend. But let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of my fire build? If there's any suggestions as far as weapons are concerned. There is one weapon I still haven't been able to get. Uh, I need to actually go get it. And that is a... Um, it's a little spinning thing that actually it has a chance to drop a firebomb after you kill someone. So if you guys do have that one, that's another one I would suggest. But I haven't been able to pick that one. That's why I didn't mention it. But it's actually pretty, pretty good. I've seen a couple of clips of it. It actually looks pretty dope. But overall, in general, guys, that is the fire build. I do hope you guys find this video helpful and informative. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys, what build are you guys rocking? And don't forget, for all things in Satin Screen Rahala, make sure you keep it locked to this channel. And I'll talk to you guys later.
Be careful now. 